with all not your truth or kindness, Lord. With all not your truth or kindness, Lord. Welcome to The Notice, where together we notice the mercy of God. I'm Susan Hookstra, your host. The Notice podcast explores our need to be noticed through biblical musings and conversations with special guests, experience relevant topics, and encouragement as we take notice of how the God of mercy satisfies. On this episode of The Notice, are you a creative person who struggles to find a place to contribute in the local church? Or do you wish more creative things were happening at your church? Join me as I welcome singer, actress, and casting director Anne Miranda as we talk about what it's like to be a creative in the church setting. We discuss the vulnerabilities that creative individuals face, why it's challenging for churches to understand the creative mind, and how God ultimately affirms us. Anne Miranda is a professional singer-actor who has performed in regional and dinner theater venues throughout the Midwest and Mid-Atlantic states. She holds a BFA in vocal performance from Carnegie Mellon and has a calling on her life to minister to fellow creatives and encourage them to cultivate an intimate, spirit-filled relationship with the source of their creativity. Anne has also appeared in several independent films and has recently ventured into casting and production, Her current project is an episodic documentary entitled Creative Icons, which interviews creative people of faith whose art reflects the creator in inspirational ways. She is actually co-producing this documentary with a previous guest who was on the notice, Scott, owner and founder of Flipbook Pictures. So Anne, welcome to the notice. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you because I am one of those people who you have encouraged and cultivated to look to the source of my creativity, which is God. On a previous episode of The Notice, I spoke about creativity with a mutual friend of ours, singer and songwriter, Justin Reed. We talked about the importance of creativity and how being creative is part of God's character. So when we create something that didn't exist before, we're actually reflecting an attribute of God. We talked about all kinds of creations that don't necessarily mean artistic creations. You know, it could be a new recipe, a song, a story, a building, or even designing a new layout for your home. But oftentimes creative individuals, especially artists, find themselves feeling a little lost in the traditional church settings. So can you share with our listeners a little bit about your experiences working with creative people in a ministry setting? Yeah, sure. From the very beginning of when I had told people at my church I was going to be studying voice and singing and I wanted to get into musical theater, they were very excited for me. Um, Many of them saying, well, that's great. You can be the next Sandy Patty or you can sing gospel music. And whenever I would say, well, I feel like God's calling me into the musical theater area, there was a little bit of a a frown, you know, they didn't Mm -hmm. really think that that was a good idea. So I was a little frustrated from the very beginning in explaining how I felt like God was calling me into the secular theater world, um, because I felt like we're supposed to be salt and light. What's wrong with that? And if your son or daughter is studying to be an engineer, they're not going to just be building church buildings and sacred places. So I found that to be a little bit of a a frustration with some of the church in understanding how God can call different creative people and what what their calling looks like. Mm -hmm. You know, we've all heard of the artistic temperament, right? (laughs) But why would you say that creatives need more validation? You know, we share our creation with others. Like I know for myself, I'm a professional clarinetist. I'm a songwriter. I'm now an author. Whoa, what does that mean? And all these creative things that I do, when we share them, we, we need feedback, right? And oftentimes people interpret that as being the artistic temperament. Tell, tell me what you think about that. Yeah, it's interesting the way that the body of Christ is. I mean, I'm not, if I'm an eyeball in the body of Christ, I'm not a big toe in the body of Christ, but you can't do without either one. 
And I think there's all different, not just artistic temperaments, but there's all different temperaments, period, in the body of Christ. And and we all are designed to be together so that we can learn to coexist and love one another and appreciate what each other brings to the body. So I think when you're talking about artistic temperament, you're talking about a, like you have mentioned, need for validation and need to really be seen um, and understood by others in the body for what God has already gifted you to do. If you if you mix it with insecurity, which a lot of us have, mm-hmm. <laughs> mix it with codependency, which a lot of us mm-hmm. have, um, myself included, it's a it's a soup that can be very toxic for relationships in the church and for um, other people to kind of view us from the outside. Just like everything else, once you dig down deep into there and understand that when you're a creative person and you have something that you're creating, it's like a baby that you, you're not really ready to share sometimes with people, but sometimes you need to get that feedback, that sharing and some understanding, even critical uh, understanding so that you can go back and finish it and make it better. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I feel like something will be presented and it will be criticized and then we won't feel like showing it again. Right. And that's very right. sad. Right. I think of people like Katy Perry and I don't know, Jessica Simpson, and some of these other Beyonce, people who grew up in the church and who are now like total pop icons, big stars. And I wonder if they had received uh, validation within the church and some mentoring from artistic people within the church, if they would have decided to go into the pop culture and pander to the what's popular for I don't know, but I'm just wondering about that inside my heart, you know? Yeah, that's a good thing to think about. I know in my experiences, I've seen local churches characterize creative, enterprising individuals as self-promoting because their their gifts don't fit in the natural church setting. So how do you think the pastors and the staff view those creative people in the congregation who don't have gifts that fit those standard roles? Yeah, I do think that the the church uh, right now has so many, there's so many moving parts to a church service, production, things that have to be done in order to bring things to life on Sunday morning, that adding anything new into the mix, anything creative, can sometimes make them throw up their hands and say, wait, I don't know how to deal with this. There's too many, too many moving parts. I now have, I know how to plug in a, you know, a guitar, a... <laughs> drum set, uh, you know, it's all together. And um, asking me to add an interpretive dance into the mix is just, you know, and then there's there's also a lot of fear. Who do you promote? What sort of activity can you promote from the platform of a church? There's going to always be people's opinions. And so there's a little bit of fear factor that goes on in within um, pastoral staffs and churches that it would be better to not put anything up there than to put something up there that's going to be criticized and they're going to get emails and complaints about, which is sad because for all the interpretive dancers out there who feel like God's right. called them to do that, where do they do what God's called them to do? Wouldn't it be nice to have a place within the body of Christ, within the church, that could be a, a incubator or a place for them to, to try out their creativity before they take it out to the marketplace, perhaps. And it's always a tough thing to balance that, not only with what the church and the production things that a church service um, entails, but also just marketing. I know with a, marketing a book right now, I, f- I felt uncomfortable when I got a hold of people to do an endorsement for the book. I really prayed about it and I said, God, how can I do this authentically? God said to me, he said, Why don't you ask some of those individuals who mentored you and really did something for you spiritually as you grew to a place where you could even write a book? And so the beautiful thing was I reached out to some individuals and I said, I'm writing this book and I really want you to know that I couldn't get to this place of writing this book without your spiritual guidance and what you did. And I would really appreciate it if you could write an endorsement. And what happened, there's, I have so many stories, but one of the things that happened was that one of the individuals was going through a really rough time in what they were doing in ministry. And that was just what they needed to be affirmed and validated. 
in that moment. And they needed that. So then I thought, okay, God, you're doing something here that I have way bigger than Susan. And so I think that that marketing piece is like that. It's hard to step out there. But at the same time, I'm realizing the more I step out, the more I connect with other individuals. So if you're creative out there and you're struggling with that, maybe that's helpful to you. I want to talk a little bit with you, Anne, about the difference between talents and spiritual gifts. I just want to explore this a little bit with you. In my book, A Firm Grasp, I talk about talents as being those that are human. They're based on like a genetic structure or a family placement, or just even experiences in life. Um, Certainly, everything we receive is from God, So, but at salvation, we're given spiritual gifts, which are to enrich the body, like discernment, administration, exhortation, faith, those kinds of gifts. So these are the kinds of gifts we cannot exercise without God. And Romans 11, 29 through 32 describes that actually the ultimate gift of all of this is mercy and says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. So I just wanted to kind of throw that around with you. I'm starting to sense that there's this, there's a difference between talents and spiritual gifts, but when the two are combined, God does something amazing. And that's what I think all of us who are believers in Jesus Christ and who are creative are looking for. Yeah, there's something kind of in the world, they call it the sweet spot, you know, where things kind of all come together, the sun and the stars and the moon align, and you're just doing like you're going with the flow, like all these different phrases that people use to to say like things are going great, but you add the Holy Spirit into that mix Mm -hmm. and it is anointed. It becomes something completely different. For the, for the purpose of ministering, you know, for the purpose of just doing what Jesus did. I mean, Jesus really was an artist when he walked the earth. He, everything that he did, he touched and he created, he brought order out of chaos and he was creating healing and creating, you know, he just walked around healing and creating all the time. And he was anointed for that, for that purpose. He had come and he said, I've, I've been anointed to bring good news to the brokenhearted and, and bind up the, the brokenhearted and preach good news to the poor, and and he's given us that same gift, that same mandate to use our gifts in conjunction with the Holy Spirit. And so when you do that, you know the lives are going to be touched and people are going to be changed. And it's not just going to be a good performance. It's going to be anointed performance where God can, I mean, I don't know if you've, you've experienced this, but I'm sometimes sitting in a sermon and I can talk and think about some of the sermons that I have been hearing the words are, and those scriptures are going, you know, out of the preacher's mouth and, and I'm hearing them in my ears, but yet the Holy Spirit's doing something completely different than what the pastor is even talking about mm-hmm. in my spirit. Mm-hmm. And I feel a little mm-hmm. guilty sometimes because I'm like, I really wasn't listening, but it was like, because he triggered something, the Holy Spirit wanted to work in me. As I sit there and listen to the sermon, the Holy Spirit has a chance to, to do its work and heal whatever's broken in me and do all kinds of cool things. Sure, he's a talented, gifted speaker, right? But in conjunction with the Holy Spirit, the words that he says combined with God, man, it's it's supernatural at that yeah. point. And that can happen right. with whatever activity we're involved in, whether it's it's something that's overtly creative, like singing or dancing or acting or something like that. But, you know, there's also times when we can be doing something that is not in the guise of ministry, like it's not singing a worship song, for instance. You could be acting on stage in a, a secular situation. And yet, how does the Holy Spirit interject in that? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, you can. And and I keep thinking of the my favorite scripture verse, my life verse is 1 Peter 4.10. And it says that each one should use whatever gifts he's been given to serve others, administering God's grace in its various forms. And like you say, there's more than one form of gifting and talented, you know, there's different things that could be, could be happening. I feel like a lot of it is the motivation of your heart toward God and toward the usage of your gifts, right? If you're using all of the gifts that you've been given to serve others, you're able to connect with the spirit in that way. If you're using all the gifts and talents that you've been given to serve you and promote you, that's self-promotion. Right. And back to your self-promotion question, I feel like 
a lot of times I get chastised from friends who've told me, why didn't you promote yourself? I didn't know you were in that show. I could have come down to see you. Right. <laughs> so some of it becomes uh, just giving the information to people and allowing them to be blessed as part of it. And what I was saying before with the Creative Icons Project is feeling reticent to ask people for money, especially people that I love and friends of mine. Uh, but at the same time, if I don't do that, I'm robbing them of an opportunity to be blessed by what they're going to be partnering with. Just and, like you asked and utilizing utilizing their spiritual gifts. Maybe they have the spiritual gift of giving. There you go. What you're talking about reminds me a little bit of motives. Think that Proverbs, well, Proverbs 16, 2 states, all a person's way seems pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. So it's really hard for us. It would be almost presumptuous of me to say, Anne, you're, you're trying to get a project going because you want to promote yourself. Judging of me to say why you are doing that because I don't really know your motives, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. your motives. The only person who really knows our motives in and outs is God. So all we can do is take it at, at face value because when we're connected with the spirit, our motives are gonna be pure. <laughs> They're gonna be okay. pure. We are gonna do it for the right reasons. And I know um, if we dwell on the message, God and the gospel, can we be creative in how that message gets out there? I think that's the key. I think in anything we do, opening ourselves up to partner with the Lord in the creative process of what he wants to do, even if it's just organizing your closet, like, you know, mm -hmm. or it just any, any little thing that you in, embark upon in order to do you know, whatever he's called you to do or whatever, even your to-do list that he hasn't called you to do, but has to get done, right? Are there ways to bring creativity that comes from God into every little thing? And to do that, we need to be walking with him, be in him. He's the vine, we're the branches. And if we're walking and creating and flowing with what he's got going for us every minute of every day, then even the most mundane things can become anointed. And you can be creative in how you handle being in a long line at McDonald's. <laughs> I say that <laughs> funny because I was in a long line at McDonald's a couple weeks ago. And then when I finally got up to the terminal to give my, my order, the, the person there was really struggling. I don't know if she was new or whatever. But she was really struggling. And that took about 15 minutes to get my order placed. And I'm going to tell you, folks, Susan... Even creative, talented Susan wouldn't have been able to handle that situation. But Susan, through the strength of the Holy Spirit, was fine. And I think we can do that whether we're at a drive through at McDonald's, whether we're up on a stage creating something, where we're writing a book or whatever we're doing. I think as long as we're connected to the Spirit, we have impact. We have influence. It doesn't matter where we are. And so often... I know when I talk about being creative that I find some people are almost intimidated by that. Oh, well, you can write music and you can play. And I'm like, well, so? And I don't mean that to be self-deprecating. I mean that to be, so tell me what, how God used you today. It's right. not, it's, mm -hmm. we, we're all, we're all part of, like you said, the body. So if, what would you say to a person, creative person out there? who does struggle, who's trying to get their idea, ideas to flourish, but they're struggling, what would you say to them? Well, I would say that you're not alone. There are so many artists. Artists tend to, creative people tend to silo up and produce their art. That's where, you know, they can mm -hmm. have their most creative face in their own studio, in their own uh, practice room. And that's where they, they are creative. But we are, we are created to be in community too. And so I would encourage them. There are others out there like you. Mm -hmm. And that's one of those things I feel like between now and whenever the Lord takes me home, that's what I want to devote my life to is to connect creative people with each other and connect creative people to their creator and just see what God will do. I think the word for last year during COVID, when I was meeting with uh, one of your guests, Justin Reed and some of our other friends to, to pray over this, pray for the arts in our area, pray for 
what God wanted to do in, in the world of creativity, the word that kept repeating over and over was collaboration. Mm-hmm. And it's not easy sometimes for us to collaborate. We lose control sometimes when we collaborate. But I really want to encourage, I would say, go ahead, join in, take a risk, connect with people, be vulnerable, open up your heart and see what the Lord will do in and through that vulnerability. That's really impactful. And because I know in my journey with writing a book, of course, the first portion is all silo. I, me and God with a computer, right? And then when I had to get start reaching out and have some people help me with like cover design and interior work, I started to realize, wow, I'm not in this journey alone. And that started to get more and more beautiful when I was connecting with other people and bouncing ideas off of it. And just, it's just better together. As corny as that sounds, it's better together. So tell us, tell our listeners a little bit about this creative icon project that you have going. I think that's, it's just, it's awesome to hear about this. And this is a way of, of connecting creatives. It's really a vehicle. It's a passion project, but it's also a, a calling. Scott McGee and I just put that together just from a collaborative effort that we had. There was a meeting in, um, in Lansing, the, the, the Christians of Greater Lansing, the Coggle meeting, and we all connected with one another over the arts, the area of the arts, and began to talk about that. And what sort of came to mind is that there are um, creative people and artists all over the country, all over the world, who are producing, they, they are people of faith, and they're producing amazing mm-hmm. uh, work. And we wanted to highlight them, and we wanted to hear from them about their process. And unfortunately, so many of them feel a little intimidated to reveal that their faith and their roots run so deep in the Lord mm-hmm. because of the secular nature of the art world and of the, where they are. So it's kind of interesting hearing from them and watching them and, and you know, unequivocally all of them, all of their art, that the people that we've interviewed were, have been authors and visual artists and sculptors and all of them, their art is, because they're connected to the creator, their art is healing. The byproduct of what they're doing is ministry. I just can't wait to, to, get, it, to, to get it out there and, and share it. We have a concept trailer that people can write in and look at, but we don't have all of the permissions from all of the famous people we have in our concept trailer mm-hmm. <laughs> that we want to interview yet. Okay. Um, so there's a few of people that we still have to get some permissions from, and then we can... Um, release it publicly but it has been such a beautiful journey and like you say when you start to work alone on things and formulate questions that you would want to ask in an interview and begin to interview it's it's almost the 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 beginning of the project is more when you get the collaborative effort going you know like you said it's Mm -hmm. just the art happens alone but then you're you really realize how much you need each other you and do. it's going to be you one do. of those opportunities for creatives all over. And each episode is designed to have people that aren't even uh, creative people at all or consider themselves creative to realize that they are a creative icon. They are an icon. It's just a reflection of another thing. That's you know? right. That's so right. The creative icon is is being the cre- is being an icon, being a reflector of the glory of God to a hurting world. So it's a beautiful concept and. I can't wait to get get it going. I can't wait to I can't wait to see it myself. I know um, it reminds me of a line in one of the songs I wrote called "Masterpiece." That we are actually a piece of the master, and we're designed designed to reflect a part of him. So if you're creative out there, just don't hold back. God wants you to get out there and share yourself and take some risks. Collaborate with some other people, and and you'll you'll just there'll just be so much power in that collaboration because when it's all said and done it's about the gospel folks in any way we can get it out there let's get it out there whether it's in our own little podcast (laughs) if it whether it's a book whether it's a song whether it's a dance whether it's a film just just get out there and do it don't let anything hold you back 
because God is going to show you so much about yourself in that process. So Anne, thank you so much for being here. I can't wait for this project to come out and I look forward to uh, spending more time with you in the future because COVID has really not made that possible. But anyway, thank you, Anne, for being here. Yes, my pleasure. Go to creativeicons.tv and join the tribe and that way we can collaborate with each other all you creative people out there in sounds good <laughs> <laughs>It's just been a couple of weeks since my book has been released, and I'm excited about the conversations that have taken place. You know, I'd love to hear from you about the book, whether you post a review on Amazon or send me an email at susan at susankhookstra.com. I'd love to post them on my website so others can hear how the book has been impactful. And for those in the Traverse City area, on Sunday, July 18th at 1 o'clock p.m., at the Twin Lakes Park Pavilion on North Long Lake Road, I'll be having a book launch party. Rachel Jenneman, host of Unique Purpose on WLGN Radio, will emcee the event. David Eichenroth will provide some music, will enjoy some refreshments, and of course sign a book or two. And Toledo friends, I'm coming soon. I'll be there on August 14th to see you. Until next time, take notice.